When you think of shows that depict the good life of Africa, blood and water comes first. Their school has tabs. What else do you want to know about the good life? I have made reviews of the first two seasons already. Check that out now so you won't be lost in the new season and be in the comment section shouting, Who's that guy? Who's that big? Why? Why are they buying fake headphones? This will be a pretty long review. Grab yourself a babe. If you don't have one, I am sorry. Try again next year. You love us, sir. <laughs> okay, like this video, subscribe, and roll the intro. Tough times never last. Tough people last. Episode 1 was titled Reorientation. Fun fact about this episode, if you look hard at this teddy bear and zoom in just beside my subscribe button, you will see another subscribe button. Yeah, <laughs> subscribe. This episode starts with a backstory of the night of the child abduction. It's like the theme of blood and water. And it really showed how bad these guys are. Huleng's mom was clueless and I know she's tired. She just had a baby. Anyone can do it, yeah? Just wake up and check on your child. It's not that hard. I'm, I'm joking, before person can keep. Her dad was worse. He tried calling off the plan even after collecting the check. And the man was like, I did not check the check. I did not check the check. No, I didn't cash it, so the man is still there. Okay, let's talk about other characters that we love. Wendy and Chris are stronger than ever. I lied. Their relationship is as shaky as a crack addict in the 80s. He constantly keeps lying just to create this front that he's a bad guy. And she refuses to say how she feels about him. This is incredible. Wait, I don't know you could cook. Mm. I'm full of surprises. Sorry, we forgot your bisque. Just put it down and fuck off. Oh god! Now why people know the F people be this? She would also be in Spain for six months because her brain is just too big. He is failing in school, but because of this, he's probably going to repeat a class. And he does. Risi needs money so bad. Her mom's expenses are getting way more expensive. Hi. Hi. Our record show there's an outstanding payment from last month. I'd just like to check when it will be settled. Yes. For new characters, we have Puleng's cousin, Lunga, who now stays with them as he looks for a new house. Spoiler alert, he never finds a new house. He's a freeloader. I think that's all the new characters except the occasional random kids wearing school uniforms that always use social media every second. In Puleng's side, she has weed. They have a weird relationship. She is way more mature than him. And she's trying her best to kill herself by investigating the underworld of human trafficking. And as she's doing that, guess what my guy is doing? He is camping and touching poop. That's balance if you tell me. He also doesn't know that Puleng and KB had a fire session at the end of season 2, but Puleng wants what happened to remain a secret. By the way, you haven't told anyone about the kiss, right? Come on. What do you take me for? Uh, the guy who wrote this track about his hookups and performed it in front of his high school. Okay, so the hunt for Fikile's real dad is on. Puleng's mom won't help and I know this man is low-key happy about that. Then she goes to meet Puleng's dad and he said the man that his ex-wife slept with used to be a client of hers in the good old days. <laughs> that was big for them because it gave them this sense of accomplishment. You can see Puleng happy that her dad is a snitch. Also, in episode 1, Fix keeps getting calls that sounds like someone is at the other end but doesn't want to say anything. It just sounds more like Britain when you listen so close to it. Come on, listen to this. Nabi, sir. Nabi, sir. Nabi, is that you? Nabi, sir. The new year comes by, Fikile changed her wallpaper because she now hates Sam. The guy hasn't spoken to her in days, but she doesn't know that my guy has been the one that has been calling her up and down, breathing aggressively. Plain's brother got into Parkes and I don't know why everyone is happy. They obviously can't afford it all, but congratulations to you. And congratulations to your new student loan. He gets bullied immediately. Oh, yo, you're not happy again? Oh, no, no, jump up. Jump up. Yeah, welcome to Parkhurst. I was happy to pronounce the name, guys. Chris, who has been demoted in school, doesn't actually care. He probably loves it. He loves it so much that I think he should keep failing. You know what? 
fail again next year. Maybe the school should make a statue to show how resilient you are in staying in the school. The episode was packed. I am not lying. KB's mom came back. We know she traffics people, but I did not see this coming. She turns herself in, saying the day Fix was kidnapped, she relocated. How convenient, ma'am. So I come back now to clear my name for my son's sake. You are here, feeling yourself. Then they brought a sketch of her from 2003 that was made by someone who saw her outside the hospital that day. That person is dead now. You see why you don't draw anyhow. She had everything planned so they would never get her, even went ahead to kidnap Janet and her son. Then one night I went to a client's farewell party at his art studio, Anthony Gavisa. He smelled good. To be honest, that one caught me off guard when she said it. I was like, hey, why does this matter? But hey. He smelled good. And Fix real dad looks like a Gen Z artist. This won't end well. She meets her dad, but she could not talk, so she ran away. And then episode one, Pulling told weed that she made out with KB. So do I'm gonna go outside near the main gate. You go see when you find. Come, go deal with them. Episode two, titled The Recruit. Fun fact about this episode, everyone eats conflicts. Why, you may ask? I don't know. Alright, Sia, who is Puleng's brother, got bullied in the last episode. In this episode, the bullier <laughs> apologized. <laughs> it's not really what. But by apologizing, it makes Tahira a snitch because she was the one that caught him. And that's all she did. She helped the child. The people from the school start trolling her recklessly. Good morning, everyone. I was actually... This chick is even going live. This person said she is so whack with a H. Did I spell my name wrongly, guys? They troll her so much that she writes an article that no one cares about just to clear her name. It did not end well. And this is the first lesson, guys. No one cares about the truth as long as the lie is more entertaining. So it backfired and she lost her post as head girl. Christy is still owing so much money and her supplier is like the nicest guy. I don't know why. He keeps smiling every time he sees her. Maybe he likes her. I don't know. I don't know. But for some reason, he makes selling drugs an aspiration for me. Wade is in the mood, if you know what I mean. He watched a sex ed video and bam, he feels the need to do the do. You know what I'm saying? Mountain do. He was so down bad that he even watched those movies. I can't tell you what those movies are, but you know what I mean? Mountain do. How fast can I talk about Chris in this episode? Count it me. His babe is now in Spain. He got angry and lonely, so he goes big for his birthday party. The birthday party was dead in the end. They only had a turnaround of like four people and they were the savants. <laughs> the end. How fast was that? KB, who is like this failed child musician, like big time rush. Sorry guys. Is greeted by his mom, who is this... She's a lot of things, actually. She's like a kidnapper, killer, trafficker. And her husband is um, a Tupac lover. I can also get down with some... Hmm? She keeps trying to tell him that she is innocent, but he isn't buying it. Look at her. She has like a black eyeliner. No one with black eyeliner is good. Oh, am I pronouncing that in Alana? 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 Oleg is on an apology tour and she feels weird is angry with her. But honestly, Wade isn't. The only thing that's making him angry is how tight his trousers are. Come on, guys. Change this thing now, please. But Sam was the one that kidnapped her in the last episode. He actually did not kidnap her. He just dragged her to the side. But what I find very funny is that he left his mom with bad guys that have guns. I went to chase women. That's a real man. The plus of this episode is that we got a backstory for Fix and Puleng's dad. And this is it. Their marriages were failing badly and both fathers left but when they came back they found out that there was a new child one way or another so both dad have somewhat the same story it's called the deadbeats at the end of the episode Puleng met kb's mom and she was like drive safely drive safely Episode 3 was titled Blind Sports. Fun fact about this episode, at their dinner, they drank tea and cake. Yep, 
You can see how hard it is to find the fun facts. Fix decides to join her dad's workshop just so she can get close to him. And just after two minutes, a day did not even go by, she decides to tell him the truth. In the last episode, Pullen got into an accident caused by KB's mom, obviously. She sustained a, like a broken neck, a broken arm, a broken heart, because her dad wasn't lucky. <laughs> I tried to spill what I was saying to make it sound more deep. <laughs> R.I.P. Baba. One thing I keep saying about this show is that Pulling is the actual villain. And people don't know. She didn't cry. She just didn't care that her dad died. But immediately after his death, she starts hunting for the truth. Uh, who did what to what. And I'm like, come on, man. Just rest. It's fine. At the funeral, she asked for the police report. And her mom said, no, my child. You have to go into an anime type training to get the police report. And she was like, Beth, you can do it. You can do it. Six weeks go by and her hero passed the test. And she was finally given the golden police report. <laughs> also, if the edit was weird, it was Iroko Critics' fault. He failed to plug his computer. Thank you, bro. I truly appreciate it if you're watching this. Then we find out that the report was too good to be true. And I'm not shocked. The guys, it's Elizabeth. She removed the E from her name. She can do anything at this point. But what I like about Wade was that he is a gangster. So when Pulen was ready to do the do, Mountain Do, <laughs> he said no. A word most girls have never heard in their life. This is, this is a lot. Are you sure you want to do this? Don't you? Over the span of the past two episodes, the gang have been on the hunt for more answers. And in this scary journey that they've thrown themselves into, it brought them to this place. So this is how it works. They recruit babes and send them to Dubai and that's the end of it. It's like Point of Grace 2.0. 1.0 was stealing kids. 2.0 is stealing women. 3.0 is stealing your mom. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. At the end of the episode, they got raided at the party and the police saw some drugs in Wade's pocket. And Pulling was also kidnapped. I told you, this is the second kidnap or third that has happened in the span of two episodes. Damn! Episode 4, titled Out of the Shadows. Fun fact about this episode, my subscribe button hasn't been touched by you. Please touch it. It wants you so bad. <laughs> That sounds so wrong. Subscribe, guys. <laughs> so far, what do we know? Pulling has gotten kidnapped. This is bad, but what did you expect when you play with fire? But before the whole adventure of Wade and how I think he is a madman, I have skipped some strong storylines, and that's Reese's story. So this is it. So Reese is tied into this mess because in the previous season, she was duped by a guy named Nadal Ferreira. Don't ask me why. That's his actual name. She's now under pressure as Tahira is on her neck and trying to uncover how the school's money magically disappeared. But Tahira is not doing this just for the school. She has her own motive. She wants to be reinstated as the head girl of the school. And I feel like they should just give it to her already. The babe is going to write another article that no one is going to read. But the issue is that when Tahira smells blood, she doesn't stop attacking. She disturbed Risi so much that she had to confess. And I love how Risi confessed to fraud and walked out. <laughs> it really showed that she's a child. May I go now? You think this is a joke? You think we're here to play? Back to Pule. After they kidnapped her, they put her in this shack where we can hear her shout. Please, please, uh, please, please. Why don't they just kill her? After a while of ignorance, they clocked that Pulling was actually missing. And I won't blame them. The mom, they see ghosts. They start going through footages of the party and they had to go with videos from social media because there was no CCTV in the party. But they found this guy. It was the same dude that is dropped in the previous episode. They don't know this, but I do because it's my job. They all tried to make KB see his mom for who she really is. But everything they said just passed through one ear, went out of the other ear like breeze. So if these guys are fighting, how is pulling, you may ask. She's not fine. They gave her food. She threw it away. And I know you're angry, my love. But please eat. <laughs> you need it. Okay, let's rush this bit. KB got some information from his mom. Finally, the woman was sloppy. Wade infiltrates this place that we saw in the previous episode. If you don't remember, I said Mountain Dew. 
do do do. And I love how he's acting like a ninja. <laughs> Like, what move is that? At the end of the episode, Fix drops a bombshell on the news, exposing everyone from KB's parents to even the police. Wade finally saw Puleng, but she did not see him because uh, she was blinded. Uh, you get? Episode 5 was titled May Fair. Fun fact about this episode, did you know both walls of the school are not equally covered with grass? This is my job, guys. Point out nothing, but make it sound big. This episode should be known as the Wade's Act. I don't know what Pulling did to Wade, but this man really wanted to lose his life here. He tried entering the bus, they kept her in. And he was looking for the van key, yeah? And I was like, bruh, no one in Africa puts their key there. He failed, but at least he knows that she's alive. Wade has this suspicion that someone in the police force is fabricating the case, and I think so too. So you think he'll be careful around the police and not tell the police everything but no he told them word by word play by play if there was even a possibility of a graph he would have drawn it just so he would show how stupid he is Puleng met sam's mom and um, she's just there <laughs> and they start taking her pictures for the trafficking client but Puleng being herself just spots the picture and this is why i genuinely dislike this period of the episodes because like come on man these guys can slap this babe why are they not slapping her like why are they just letting her run around and how many times did this chick try to escape? Like, jeez, man, give me the gun. I'll do it for you if you don't want to shoot. She tried escaping here, but failed. This would be for the first out of a thousand times she's going to escape. In escape number 40, Sam's mom told the guards that he should get the toy under the bed. And as soon as Baba bends, bam, she hits it. Twice. She gets pulling and they got caught again. Where are you to go? This is an accident. KB stole his mom's phone, unlocked it, and found out that they were all in Mayfair. But then, he gets caught trying to run out of his house. The episode ends with Puleng making all the girls escape again. Escape number 107. And this time, I really thought she had an opportunity to run. The rockets around the compound made for a great escape. But then, mission failed. Please shoot her now. Please, I beg you. I beg you. Lisbeth, no! Oh, um, Lisbeth shot someone. Who did she shoot? We don't know. You have to check the next episode. That's how they, they ended it. I don't, I don't know. Episode 6 was titled A Tale of Two Sisters. Fun fact about this episode, this boy is the only person that licked his lips in the whole season. How do I know? Um, honestly, I don't know why I know. <laughs> So the person who was shot was fixed, thanks to her bad aim. As a lady who is in the dangerous underworld of trafficking and the rest, um, you have a really bad aim. What's going on? After that, KB's dad in the ruckus, I've used ruckus twice today, got shot in the back by someone with an actual good aim. He blew his back out. <laughs> I, yeah, I meant every word of that. Then she shot the person that shot her husband. Her aim came back. Fix is now in a critical condition and she needs a donor. And in movie fashion, no one around her is a match. <laughs> like John Q. I hope you've watched that movie before. The only option they have is to find her biological father, which Puleng's mom goes looking for. She explained the issue to this man. And I really like how he, 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 he understood and he paid notice to everything she said just for him to walk into his house and close his door. <laughs> Love it, man. Let's pause there. What's happening to Puleng as we speak? He was caught and we finally saw the person that was working with the criminals. And it's this man. And I really wished it was the babe and not the guy. But oh well. Puleng then tried to escape again for the 500th time <laughs> this season. The sad part about this is that she stabbed a guard with an iron that she got from her poop bucket. Then she jumped into the water. Oh, she's not alone. A guard also jumped into the water. The detective wasted no time in killing him. Then he shot the other guy to cover his tracks. I actually did not like that guy. I don't know his name. I don't care, but I don't like that guy. Puleng was saved all because of KB's dad. And what a man. They blew his back out and he still wanted to help the kids. Wow. Now guys, you would think Wade, who has literally gone through hell and back, for this girl would give her some tender loving. Nah, my guy broke up with her immediately. 
You know how bad it is? This babe literally is traumatized that he still had the opportunity to break up with her. It shows how much he hates her. <laughs> okay, let's end this long review. Fizz got the transplant from her Gen Z dad. He ran away after. <laughs> Such a Gen Z. <laughs> now to tell some loose ends. They were able to catch the cop from a recording. It's a, like a long story. Even the people making it don't expect me to explain. But the headset was reverse recording. Don't ask me why. They used this to release Sam from captive. They caught KB's mom, in, I think in Mexico. <laughs> oh, no, it looked like Mexico. Wendy came back after making Chris beg for her attention all season long. Would he stay with her or him? No one knows. <laughs> the season ends with a hint that the slave trade, <laughs> literally, won't end since Sam is one of them now, I think. Did I like this season? Yes and no. Yes in terms of seeing the characters that we have come to love and showcasing Africa in a good way. That seems rich because everybody in this show seems rich. And the new aspect is that the show felt like a lot of different stories. I felt like it was a moving train and it was always going to end the same way. So the characters were just enjoying the ride instead of driving. It's a weird ideology, but that's what I feel. I missed so many characters because if I had tried to do it, we will be here for life and I'm tired. <laughs> I've already said it, Puleng is the villain of the show. She killed her dad because because she wanted to uncover more mysteries instead of just going to the police or letting some things just go. Next season, I expect for them to just kill Puleng immediately, like catch and shoot her. It's not that hard. I can do it. Pay me 10 CDs. <laughs>